Awesomeness, and welcome back. In this section, we're going to see how Jax's way of handling random numbers makes it so much easier for us to debug issues in stochastic programs. If you've ever tried drawing random numbers in NumPy, you'll probably end up writing something that looks like this example over here. Say you started with a random seed for your program, and in two Jupyter cells below that, you sequentially drew two random numbers. Now, if you accidentally reran this cell over here, you would overwrite the value of A with a different value. And this, by the way, is super problematic. If your original value of A gave you an error, while the new value of A didn't, you might end up spending a ton of time trying to debug your program before finally giving in and restarting the kernel. And I know that because I encountered that exact issue when I was trying to debug a program that involved MCMC sampling before. And my gosh, it was intensely frustrating to handle a bug that popped up once every 13 hours on average. So the problem here is actually implicitness in our random numbers. Rather than explicitly setting a seed for each random number draw, we instead, with vanilla NumPy, have this stateful global seed that implicitly controls draws from the start of our session that makes it very difficult when we're trying to develop our stochastic program. Jax, by contrast, enforces full determinism in our random number generator, requiring um, numbers, drawing numbers to have an explicit pseudo-random number generator key, analogous to the random seed, to be explicitly passed in to each of the random number generating functions. As you can see in this code cell over here, the PRNG key determines the draw. You can call this value, this function, this cell over and over and over and over, and you will always get the same result. That's also shown by taking the same key and assigning it uh, and running, running the same function, random number generator, in a, different, in a different cell. And as you can see in this next code cell over here, if you want to get a new value for your draws, you do have to explicitly split the key or pass in a new key in order to get a different random number from the draw. Okay, now if we wanted to generate arrays of random numbers, there are at least two ways of handling this. The first way is a little bit of a brain teaser. Uh, we create 20 keys from a master key and we vmap our random number generator function across each key. Um, and this is a nice little tiny example of composing vmap with random number generation. But of course, the simpler way is to explicitly specify the shape value over there. Now, notice how the draws were different. And that's because the keys that were passed into the first function were descendants of the master key, while in the second case, we passed in the master key itself. And so you can see exactly that you know, the key really determines the draw. So now let's look at a minimally complex example using the Gaussian random walk. The Gaussian random walk is defined as a stochastic process where at each time step, a random number is drawn from a Gaussian and added to the previous value that's drawn, starting, of course, with a draw from a Gaussian itself. You end up with a time series that looks something like this guy over here. Now, we might look at the logic of a Gaussian random walk as expressed in this block of code down there and think, hmm, that loopy carryover does look kind of familiar. And indeed, we can write this in JAX without writing any loops. And it's a stochastic program that is combined with looping. This, by the way, is our first taste of composing JAX functions together, which is our first taste of composable program transforms. So we'll start by instantiating an array of JAX PRNG keys, scanning a Gaussian random walk function over the array of keys and finally collecting the observations together. Here's the Python code to make it happen. The new draw is the value of the previous draw plus previous draw plus a draw from a Gaussian. And we return the new draw while accumulating the previous draw. Meanwhile, we're scanning the function across an array of PRNG keys. All right, so if we go ahead and plot 
this the result, we actually get a Gaussian random walk itself. Now, what if we wanted multiple draws? Well, we can, we can accomplish this, right? And we start by first encapsulating one draw, right? That is one time series inside a function that includes most crucially the splitting of keys. Let's call this function grw draw. What grw draw accepts is a single PRNG key as well as num steps, which is the number of time steps with which we would like to run our Gaussian random walk for. Inside the function, we split the key over the number of steps that we wish to simulate for, and then we return the Gaussian random walk time series that we just simulated. That's the draws piece over there. Now, our next goal is to end up with a function that we can vmap this across multiple starting PRNG keys. Notice how we had the num time steps thing in there. That's, that's sort of a little bit troublesome because we, we don't want to make any assumptions about how many time steps we want to simulate for, but we also don't have an array of time steps that we want to simulate over, right? So the way we can accomplish this is by using functools partial, right? And what it does is it partially evaluates a function, in this case, by fixing the num steps parameter to a fixed value of 1,000. And this makes sure that the function that is returned, in this case, grw1000 steps, uh, only has to worry about vmapping across the leading axis of keys and doesn't have to worry about the num, uh, num steps argument. And by the way, just like that, we've composed vmap with lax.scan and deterministic random draws. Um, and let me talk a little bit about that. The GRW, the Gaussian random walk, as I've described it, is a minimally complex example of what we call staging out the computation. And in fact, I learned this from a talk by one of the creators of JAX, Matt Johnson. I like to think of this idea as being anchored on identifying the repeatable units of computation and finding ways to VMAP and scan them. As you read through the example at the top of the notebook, you should be able to see that we basically compose VMAP, scan, and random number generation together into a, a single, moderately complex stochastic program that is deterministically reproducible given a single master key. If you've tried doing any of this without VMAP, scan, PRNG keys, I hope that once you've finished this example, your mind is blown by how structured and clean your code can be by leveraging these functions. OK, let's go do some exercises now. The notebooks we'll be using is called, the notebook we'll be using is called deterministic randomness. The earlier part of the notebook will give you a detailed walkthrough of what we've, of some of the things that we've mentioned in this video. So definitely spend some time pondering PRNG keys, splitting them, using them in random number generator functions, etc. That will really anchor your knowledge. And once you're done, there's some really cool exercises on Brownian motion in there, and you'll get your chance to try your hand at implementing the Gaussian random walk yourself. Try your best to do it from memory. I hope you enjoy the notebook, and we'll see you in the next video.